One, as our lovely host told you, my name is Fatem Al Sayed. Two, my brother's name is Ibrahim Al Sayed. Three, Ibrahim was a part of the robotics team back in the States with leader Nick Kropka. Four, Nick Kropka was in direct contact with Dean Kamen. Dean Kamen is not only a TED speaker, but he's one of the world's most brilliant minds. Five, Dean Kamen often attends social gatherings and business conferences with Bill Gates. Bill Gates, obviously, one of the, sec the second richest man in the world. So that means if you take yourself and add yourself to the beginning of the connection, you're connected to Bill Gates in six simple steps. But how realistic is this connection? I mean, does something I say or do actually reach Bill Gates? Let me give you a more realistic example. When I was living in the States, I was friend with a family called the Elder Dehs. Now, the mother of the Elder Deh family happened to be best friends with Noor Suleiman's mom, who attends Haya Academy and is our host today. So before I even knew Noor existed, before I even knew there was a school called Haya, I was connected. So what's the point of these connections? To illustrate this, I have my one in the back there with a ball of strength. Now, throughout my speech, I'm going to be saying, pass it on. When I say pass it on, whoever has the ball string is going to keep hold of the string that they have, but pass on the rest of the ball. Okay, so Marwan, pass it on. Next person, whoever is closest. <laughs> By the end of the presentation, we're going to see how far this connection goes. Okay, so my point today <laughs> is that keep it still until I say the next pass it on. <laughs> All right, so why aren't we using our connections today? You're probably saying, Fatema, of course we use our connections. In fact, we use our connections, guys, only when I say pass it on. Okay, <laughs> let's not go crazy. So you're probably saying, Fatema, we use our connections more than any other generation. I'd probably have to agree with you. I mean, raise your right hand if you've got a Facebook. Raise your left if you've got a Twitter. Raise your right leg if you have Google+. And halos, I have no more arms and legs. But the point is, those are superficial connections. I'm here to talk about connections that really matter. And not about what your best friend ate for breakfast or what your friend of a friend is doing after school. And you're probably saying, Fatema, we use them in connections that matter. And I have to agree with you. I mean, when the Arab world was turned upside down, we used Facebook to connect with the world that wasn't in Egypt. People like me knew what was going on via Facebook status updates. And when Japan was racked by an earthquake, people knew which roads were safe and which roads were fatal by Twitter updates. But why do we wait until calamity hits for us to start using our connections? And why are we so picky when it comes to choosing which connections? I mean, how many of you actually saw the Japanese Twitter updates about the roads? Yeah, none of you. When I'm talking about this, I mean, we should take our identity. And for me personally, my identity is I'm a Muslim, Egyptian, American, teenage girl. Can I have Booty come up here? <laughs> Pass it on. OK, now if this is me, and these are the people like me, and these are the people not like me, if I were just to connect with the people like me, this is about the extent of the connections that I would be able to make, okay? My idea, worth sharing, is that we need to forget about that. We need to forget about our identity and set it aside for a while. Using your identity has its time and place, but not when you're trying to make connections. I mean, if I forget all my identities and realize for a moment that I'm just human, I can connect with so many more people. and so on and so forth. So look how much my connection spread out. Okay, booty. <laughs> <laughs> when I first came up with this idea, I thought it was a genius. But then when I started looking it up, it turns out there's a whole ideology on it. It's called humanism. Pass it on. Humanism is the idea that in the end, we're all human, and nobody is worth any more than anyone else. 
So unfortunately, I'm not going to win the Nobel Prize because the idea was already there. But the idea is amazing when you start thinking about it. When you use this ideology, it means that people in Egypt who are complaining about women's rights realize that one out of every 10 women in Pakistan are forced into an unconsented arranged marriage. And it means that people are talking about unemployment in Egypt also realize that in Spain, more than 21% of the working class males are unemployed. Okay, so I'm not saying that our plight is any worse than theirs or theirs is more important than ours. That's exactly what I'm not saying. I'm saying that each and every one of us has a problem and each and every one of us deserves that problem to be connected with others. So that way we're unified and that the women in Pakistan and the women in Egypt and the unemployed in Egypt and the unemployed in Spain have a stronger connection. And with that connection, they have a stronger way to fix their problem. Okay. So we have this idea of humanism in our heads. What do we do with it? I say that the most important way, in fact, the easiest way to stay connected, first, pass it on, is to stay informed. OK, to show you how not informed we are on big issues, I want you to put up the number of fingers and the number of times you check Facebook or Twitter in a week. I'm seven out of seven, OK? <laughs> Ten out of, we've got some more than sevens. Okay. Now, how many times do you check a world news network every week? I'm talking about CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC. For those of you in the back, good for you. For some of the rest of you, you guys need to work on it. I mean, we really have no excuse. Journalists already do more than half the work for us. They bring the connection right to your door. And not only that, it doesn't even take that much time. I mean, five minutes on BBC.com, five minutes on Al Jazeera International, five minutes on CNN, and you have all the top headlines in the world. Ten more minutes delving into the details, and you're connected. But why? What's the point? Why put all your effort into it, being connected? I'll tell you why. Ms. Lorita, the supervisor of today's event, one at, once asked, do we have a moral obligation to stay informed with the rest of the world? I say we do. In fact, I say we're hypocrites if we don't. Because us here in Egypt feel that the rest of the world have to stay informed on what's happening in Palestine and the occupation there. But we fail to realize the occupation and stay informed on the occupation going on in Tibet. In fact, I bet you a lot of you didn't even know that Tibet was occupied. But why? Why us? Why should we stay connected? It all comes back to the idea of today's invention. We are the youth. And as the youth, we have to think humanistically. We have to use Twitter and Facebook. And we have to stay connected. Why? Because in the end, we're the future of this world. And if we're so disconnected from each other now, imagine how distant we're just going to be when we grow older. And if we want a peaceful world, we have to stay united. And if we're not united, it's little chance that we're going to be able to do anything. So stay strong to your connections. One more pass it on before we check how far we've gone. OK, so if you've got a connection, raise your hand. OK, so it on, and it went all the way over here, and then it went back. So just to show you really don't know where your connections are going to go.